All right, so the next step in the process is to grind the concrete and get it ready for the application of our epoxy. So we've assembled the tools that we need in order for us to be able to do that, and we'll go ahead and show you um, how we use them. So surface prep is very important when it comes to um, installing your epoxy floor. So we've assembled some of the tools that you'll need. Now, some of you may own these pieces of equipment, um, but for most of you, you'll probably go to your local rental center and uh, rent them. We have a 175 RPM uh, standard floor buffing machine and we're going to use our uh, velcro backed tool holder to hold our uh, diamond pucks. Um, we also have gone ahead and assembled a dust skirt on our machine because we're trying to do this with as minimal dust as possible. So our dust skirt has been assembled and we've got it attached to our shop vac. So what we're going to do is go ahead and um, install the diamond pucks. These are 16 grit. They're available on our website, as is the uh, Velcro um, holder, as well as the dust skirt. So we're going to go ahead and assemble the set of six on our Velcro-backed pad. And I like to put them uh, right up to the edge. That way as we grind we're getting as close to the edge as we possibly can. So we'll go ahead and get the six of them on here. And we're going to try to just space them out just as evenly as we possibly can. And then we'll go ahead and attach it to our floor buffer. And just like that, we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and uh, start grinding. All right, so we've been grinding on this floor for just a few minutes. We're using a 175 RPM floor buffer. We've got our Velcro backed attachment on the bottom of it, and we have our 16 grit diamond pucks attached to the bottom of that. We've installed the dust skirt on our machine. All of this equipment is available on our website, and the equipment does a really nice job. Um, we're also using safety glasses, and we're also using a, a dust mask or a respirator that can handle any silica dust. So this is basically the profile that we're looking for as we prep our floor for the epoxy. As you can see, the diamond pucks have done a really nice job of smoothing out the floor. But when we say smooth, we're still looking for a texture, almost like a sandpaper type texture. You can see here that the aggregate of the concrete is actually just starting to be exposed and that's exactly what we're looking for. You can see a really nice scratch pattern here in the concrete. This is opening up the pores of the concrete and is going to allow the primer to suck down in to the concrete. You can see here as well that I just started grinding over the crack that we repaired yesterday with the quick patch. It was a little bit high in spots, but these diamond pucks have actually smoothed it over so that our crack now is nice and flush with the rest of the floor, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to go ahead and work on this 
crack a little bit more, get the quick patch uh, ground down or sanded down nice and flush, and then we'll continue on grinding the rest of the concrete and creating the perfect profile for the epoxy primer. So here is something that more than likely you're going to encounter during your project, especially on a garage floor um, where we got some paint. So that paint needs to be removed. Some people think, well, it's just paint and I'm using a type of paint to go on top of it. Well, that's not the case. We actually do want to try to remove any paint that we have on our concrete surface. And the diamonds that we're using on the bottom of this machine or the diamond tool that you can rent at your local rental center will be able to take care of this paint. So we're going to go ahead and use the same process, the same equipment, and we're going to get rid of this paint. So we just passed the diamond tools over top of this paint and as you can see it's totally gone. So these tools will do the job. Now there's some paint that obviously is going to take a little bit more work uh, than others but in general these uh, types of tools that we're using today will take care of this paint and it's something that really needs to be done. That way the primer is going to absorb into concrete and not trying to attach itself to paint that could be loose, could be flaking. Uh, we want a nice porous concrete surface for our primer to be able to adhere to. So we have a little bit more paint here still to go. We're going to go ahead and take care of that and then we're going to continue on and we're going to grind the rest of the floor. Alright, so we just finished grinding our floor and once again to recap, we used our uh, 175 RPM floor buffer, which you can rent at any um, local rental store. We used one of our Velcro backed attachments that you can find under the tools category of our website. And then we attached a set of six 16 grit diamond pucks to the bottom of that. We hooked up our um, dust skirt on our buffer and then we attached it to our shop vac. And as you can see, the uh, shop vac with the dust skirt really kept the dust down. There wasn't a plume of smoke out in the air. 
Um, it wasn't uh, cloudy with smoke. It really kept it right onto the ground. So these are great tools to use. Uh, for most of you, you're going to rent them at your local uh, rental center. Uh, however, we do have many of these tools available for sale on our uh, website. So uh, again, as you can see, there wasn't a lot of dust created up in the air, but we do have a fine layer of dust that's on the floor and we need to get rid of that. So the next step in the process is to go ahead and vacuum out the whole floor in preparation for our primer. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now we've got the dust up off the floor, which is uh, really a critical part of the prep. Um, we don't want the dust to create any type of a barrier for the primer to be able to absorb into the concrete surface. But there you have it. That's how you prep a floor for epoxy using diamonds. And of course, it is the recommended way. Now, some may say, well, I can create this same type of profile by using an acid wash. And while that might be the method that some recommend, we don't. There's a couple of reasons why. The main reason is that when you introduce acid onto the concrete, it raises the pH level of the concrete very high. Epoxy needs a neutral pH in order for it to really be able to bond well. So in other words, uh, if you introduce the acid, you're raising the pH, creating an issue. Now we can solve that issue by neutralizing the acid on the concrete. We can do that by uh, using baking soda or ammonia. Uh, we can do a, a rinse of any of those types of um, products. But now we've introduced a lot of water into the concrete. Water is an enemy of any type of a coating. It can uh, cause the coating to blister and peel off of the surface. So we don't want to introduce a lot of water uh, to the surface. Uh, if we do, then we have to wait a number of days, maybe even a week or more, for all of that moisture to come up out of the concrete. Now, some people will walk back into their garage the next morning after doing that and say, hey, the floor looks like it's dry. And on the surface, that could be the case, but really that concrete is holding a lot of moisture in there. And if we're not careful, we're going to go ahead and coat our concrete and then within a matter of days sometimes, or within a few weeks, month or two, uh, we're gonna have that trapped moisture that was caused by us acid washing the concrete. We're gonna have that underneath our epoxy, creating hydrostatic pressure, and it's gonna lead to a whole lot of issues that we don't wanna deal with. So while we're saying that, uh, or we're not saying that you can't acid wash the concrete, uh, what we are saying is, you need to make a determination whether or not that's the way you want to go. And if you choose to acid wash, you need to be very, very careful that you're not going to trap moisture. So while this might be maybe just a little bit more work, this really is going to be a much better method of prepping the concrete um, for the epoxy. So we've created a very nice profile here. We've got a really nice scratch pattern. And again, uh, as you can see, uh, we've started to expose just a little bit of the aggregate of the concrete and that's exactly what we're looking for. We're opening up the concrete, we're creating a profile where the primer is going to be able to absorb 
deep down uh, into the concrete. So uh, you saw that the method, while it was a little bit of work, it really wasn't that dusty because we used the dust skirt on our floor buffing machine. We also used a shop vac and we were very careful to uh, clean out the filter periodically. So about every couple hundred square feet, uh, we went ahead and we cleaned out the filter of the vacuum to keep it nice so that it could absorb all of the dust that we were creating from the floor. Now there was a little bit of dust on the surface so we went ahead and we vacuumed that uh, a couple of times and now we've got a very nice clean uh, profile. Uh, safety wise we wore uh, safety glasses while we were doing this and we also wore a dust mask that could handle the silica uh, dust that was created by grinding the concrete. So that's about all there is to the prep. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get ready to install the primer.